Welcome to Europe PCR 2023. I'm Mariano Pellicano. I'm in interventional cardiology from Milan, Italy. And today I have the pleasure uh, to share some thought and perspective about the role of coronary physiology and imaging in complex bifurcation PCI with a friend and colleague, uh, Gabor Tot, interventional cardiologist from Austria. Good morning, Gabor. Hello, Maria. Welcome. So let's start directly about physiology, which is today the rule of coronary physiology in complex bifurcation PCI. You know, we are, all know that coronary angiogram is, is a very imprecise uh, method. It's a two-dimensional silhouette of, in, in this case, of a complex tridimensional structure. So the rule of physiology, I am fully convinced, is uh, about the understanding of the functional relevance of a stenosis, also in complex bifurcations, to give the indication for revascularization. Very often, a complex-looking uh, lesion turns to be functionally much simpler or even non-relevant after functional assessment. So when you ask me about the rule of physiology, very briefly, for me, it's to give the indication for, for revascularization or give you the, 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 the right to leave the lesion without treatment being non-significant. And moving to the imaging part, today, which is exactly the added value of imaging, both IVUS and OCT for complex bifurcation PCI. So with imaging, it's getting more complex because when, you, when we talk about imaging, this is a tool what enhances your procedure from the first step till the very last step. So in, as said, in this complex three-dimensional structure, there are several parameters what you need to assess and you cannot really just lie on the, the two-dimensional inaccurate uh, uh, diagnostic angiogram. You want to understand what are the proper diameters in the different branches of this complex structure, what kind of plaque you are dealing with, is there calcification, there is no calcification, accordingly how you need to prepare uh, the lesion before that how long you have to treat this lesion, where it ends, where, it, where it's a normal region to land. So to understand the anatomy, this is the first tool. Second, even during the procedure, when you want to know whether your lesion preparation was correct or not, then you place the stand for rewiring. We are all talking about uh, uh, the ideal spot of rewiring for provisional or for DK crush, different locations. You cannot rely purely on angiogram in many cases, so that intravascular imaging, when you're looking at the, at, at the stents and struts really there where they are, this gives you the accuracy to understand what you do. And finally, at the end, when you want to prove that you treated this complex structure in a proper manner, imaging will give you an answer. Stent opens nicely, stent opposed nicely, stent covers all the plaque side branches, okay, no dissection. So these are, you use it before, during, and after imaging. Indeed, I definitely agree. And um, in a head-to-head -head comparison of HIVUS and OCT, <coughs> do you see any advantage in some clinical and especially anatomical setting in which you prefer one tool instead of the other? You know, I think, uh, I think when you want to uh, decide about two, it's, already a big step, I believe, when you start systematically using imaging. What is better, IVUS or the OCT? It a bit depends on the case. Um, when you really want to understand that super accurate steps like distal rewiring, mid rewiring, and so on, this is something where based on OCT, you can see perfectly which struts you have crossed. When, on the other hand, when you are dealing with anatomies where like, uh, like left main and osteal left main, when you see that when you cannot ensure good image quality with OCT, then you might prefer rather, rather IVUS. So, and regarding the complex PCI, we can have a complex anatomical scenario in both left main and non-left main PCI. Which is your way to proceed with both imaging and physiology in uh, left main versus non-left main yeah. complex so, bifurcation. So again, complex bifurcations are complex per se. Uh, left main is, is might be even uh, one step 
trickier than the others. On one hand, because of the prognostic relevance, if something goes wrong in a left main, then it's a potential tragic event for, for that case. And therefore, in that location, we have to be the most accurate if possible. On top of this, left main is a very special setting where angiogram might be even more, more limited. You cannot really assess the diameters. Sometimes you are dealing with large diameters. You, are, you have to assess the relevance to the ostium. Um, you are dealing with two very important daughter branches. So I think, um, I believe that for left main, imaging is with or without complexity. It should be a must to have image guided procedures. Non left main bifurcations is definitely an added value, but the, but the strongest benefit, I, str I believe, it's uh, in left main setting. Yeah, definitely. And the last and short question. Tomorrow you are going back to your lab. And Monday. You, Monday, great. <laughs> Next Monday. So you will, have a, you will face a complex left main bifurcation case. How would you proceed? Yes, so first of all, I would like to understand whether I have to treat it or not. Yeah. So for that, I, I believe that the tool is a physiology. So physiologic assessment will give me the answer whether PCI is indicated or not. And then when I, we decide to find the indication to perform the intervention, then the imaging catheter has to be opened to perform perfect procedure. Thanks. Thanks, Gabor. It was an interesting discussion. We think we, we summarized the main rules of imaging and physiology in this complex PCI. Thanks for your attention and see you next time.